Hi everyone, so today we're going to take a look at installing uh, the ZWO uh, 2600 colour camera onto my new uh, Rasa 11. Uh, this is the current image train that I use for my Edge 11. Uh, the Edge 11 requires 146mm back focus and the Rasa 11 requires a 55mm back focus. And that's providing that you have used the, the rings that are provided with the Rasa. So these are the two rings that come with the Rasa. One's an M42, uh, sorry, one's a T2, uh, one's an M48 ring. And providing that you use one of these, then your back focus is going to be 55 millimeters uh, from the front plate here. So if we look at the image train uh, from the Edge 11 that I use, we've also got the camera, then I've got a 21 millimeter uh, two inch ZWO filter drawer. And then I've got a 16.5 millimeter adapter and a 21 millimeter adapter and a bunch of T2 uh, extension pieces to make up the 146 uh, millimeters. So I will only require to use the uh, filter drawer and the 16.5 uh, plus the 17.5 uh, sensor distance uh, will give me the 55 millimeters required uh, when I use uh, the T2 ring uh, on the telescope. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, slew around the telescope, release the clutches, so we can see what's going on. Uh, we'll stick it around about here, I think, and we'll turn the camera slightly. Okay, so there we have it. So if we split down the, the ring down at the 16 and a half, and take this off here. I can then attach onto the ring, just make sure it's all clear, which is fine. Okay, so now I'm going to use this ring, put on the retention plate. And I'm going to secure this to the front of the, the Rasa. Being careful, obviously, not to stick my grubby fingers onto the optical plates. It's a bit of a fiddle. if I need it on the camera, and if I wouldn't have it up later. So next up, drop in the uh, ZWO plus the filter drawer plus the 16.5 adapter. to the filter drawer just at the top here. Okay, so that is the camera and it should be at the correct back focus. So we're going to hop across to the computer now. I'll uh, install the USB and I'm going to install the camera power supply, although it's a bit temperamental whether you need it or not in your uh, not cooling, uh, but for the sake of making sure it's not going to drop out, I'm going to attach the camera supply, which is a 12 volt, 3 amp supply. Now one thing I need to have a look at is getting a plate uh, to hold the wires. I'll maybe 3D print something that will hold the wires uh, in place there. Okay, so now if I flick across to the computer, I'm going to open up a, the ASI Studio, uh, which I've installed on this machine. Uh, as I said in one of my previous videos, I don't normally do any imaging on here. I just use this for processing. I normally use my laptop or a laptop uh, for doing actual imaging sessions outside. 
So if you open up the AI Studio, I'll just use the Deep Sky Imaging. And you can see at the top here, it's found the camera. So we can connect to the camera. The resolution is a bit high, so let's just turn this down at the minute for just doing some testing. We'll go 1920-1080, which is the full HD. I can switch the preview image onto continuous and I can connect into the session here. Okay, so we'll say nothing has been focused or anything like that. So uh, I can now uh, open up CPWI, uh, the Celestron software, and I can connect. Turn the mount on and connect the mount USB, and you can see let's close that. You can see the focuser uh, has been found. Uh, so if we open up the control panel for the focuser, and I can now close that window. And Focuser, uh, controller, and obviously the image uh, from the camera there coming through. Okay, so I'm going to slew the camera now, I slew the telescope round, point out the window and just see uh, if I can see uh, anything away in the distance. Uh, I've got there's some hills at the back of the house, about a few kilometres away. So I can slew this round. I can see my windowsill and then I'm just going to knock it up slightly until the colour changes and there we can see something starting to appear so let me move the focuser in I don't know what that's looking at but uh, it's still an image of some sort Go. So we have got an image there. Obviously, I have a lot of clutch. Uh, I don't know where that house actually is. Um, let's go up a bit higher. So I want to try and get the farthest away point at the top of the hill. Oh, I just saw some sky there. So if I can nudge that just a little bit more and I'll lock the clutch there. That gives me the roof line to play with and the hills in the background. That's me going out of focus. And I think I've gone through the focus point there. Now obviously during the day we've got a lot of heat rising, the sun is shining, it's 20 odd degrees outside. We're getting a lot of uh, atmospheric dis uh, distortion, uh, but overall, at least I've got an image and I can focus through it both in and out of focus. So I would say that's a pretty good start. So next up, will we uh, actually try it outside and uh, we'll see what happens tonight or some other night whenever I actually get around to it. Okay, so that was setting up the camera. During the day, quick check, 55mm back focus for the RAS 11 using the supplied a front plate for the telescope and one of the 16.5mm adapters that came with the camera and the ZWO uh, filter drawer which is 21mm. Uh, is eh, uh, so if I can pull up the calculator. And we 
you can see the 17.5 sensor depth in the camera plus the 16.5 adapter plus the 21 of the filter drawer gives us the 55 millimeters. All right, so that's it. That's it all done. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, look forward to the next one. Look forward to hopefully get some actual uh, start time on this uh, on this rasa. All right, so just one quick thing before I go. I should have done it in the, uh, earlier on, but uh, I just thought I'd switch the camera uh, across to the full resolution, just so you can see the difference. So uh, the camera's still sitting at 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. Uh, if I stop uh, the camera and capture, switch it to full resolution, which is 6248 by 4176. I can then start the capture again, and you can see uh, the house uh, on the top of the hill, which I reckon is maybe a good six or seven kilometres away. Alright, that's it. Definitely finished this time, so I'll see you later. Thank you very much for watching.